How's it going, folks? Hope you can all hear me. Let's crack on with this and see where we go. I'm enjoying this game. <clears throat> I'm a bit confused though whether Ethan and it sort of feels like Ethan and the FBI agent are the same person. But I'm not sure. Good evening to you, sir. Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. <clears throat> I also lost someone I loved. I know what you're feeling. Then you will understand that I do not wish to talk about it. The killer has kidnapped another victim. A ten-year-old boy. Like your son, Risa. I have four days before we find his body on a deserted stretch of wasteland. No one did anything to save my son. Now, would please to move along, sir. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out, and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of this door, to the right. Thanks. That was interesting. Interesting shot there of a bag of ships. Don't know why that was important, but. We'll see. Let's make a note of those crisps. I may have said ships. But I'm saying crisps because that's the correct way of saying it. No, it's all you Americans. Those are not chips. Crisps. Were you able to just go GCA on the ship? Rob the guy. <coughs> Good evening, sir. Ethan? Are you looking for something in particular? Give me what you got in the registry. Don't fucking try anything. Open the registry, you dumb fuck. Put the money on the counter. Shit, are you deaf or what? Are you gonna open that fucking register or not? No, sir. You do not have the right to steal that money from me. I have worked very hard to earn it. You cannot have it. What did you say? You're out of your fucking mind, man! You don't get it, do you? I'm gonna put a fucking bullet right between your eyes if you don't do what I say now! You shall not be robbing my register, sir. That money is uh, mine. No. I ask you now to leave before it is too late. Crap! Hey, you! Come here! I said, come here now! Don't move! Hands up! Put your fucking hands up or I'll shoot! Don't panic. Let's just stay calm. Nobody here wants to hurt you. No, we're all just gonna be cool and everything will be all right. Yeah. I'm cool, man. 
Everything's gonna be all fucking right. <laughs> Look, it's not worth it. Put the gun down and just walk away. You giving me advice? I'll give you some fucking advice. So what are you gonna do? Someone could walk in the store any minute and sound the alarm. You haven't got a chance of getting out of this. The first guy to walk in here gets it right in the face. Fuck it, man, you're making me nervous. And when I'm nervous, there's no knowing what I'll do. The cops could turn up any minute. They don't give a damn about you. They'll shoot first and ask questions later. You're trying to freak me out, is that it? You're trying to scare me. I don't give a damn about the goddamn cops. If they turn up, I'll just blast everyone. You haven't got enough bullets. You don't really want to shoot anybody, do you? I'm sure we can find a way out of this mess, right? Now, I want you to put the gun back in your pocket and quietly walk out of the store. My friend and I will forget about what just happened, and you'll have earned a second chance not to fuck up your life. What do you say? Nice try. For a second there, you almost had me believing all your shit. And now, give me the money. And thank you, sir. I don't know what would have happened if you had not been well, here. This I didn't come by for nothing. Have a nice day. When my boy, Razor, disappeared, I received a letter with a locker ticket inside. Inside the locker, I found this box. I do not understand what it means, but I think it must be a sort of message from the man who took my son from me. Can I? Please, take the box if it can be of any use to you at all. It did not help me to save Reza, but maybe it will help you find the other little boy. Mr. Shelby. I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. I can see now that I was wrong. See you know the cops, rest there.
So she's just moved in. It looks like. <clears throat> Oh, the window. <clears throat> Was there a window open? It's got to be a dream. This is, is another Let's go have my cup of tea. Yeah, and this is who's the mother and her boys found a way in. So there's definitely something crumbling across the screen. I can't remember the boy's name. I 
I swear I didn't leave that fridge open. There's someone here. There's someone in the apartment. The phone on the desk. I could call for help. The front door. It's the only way out. If I can reach it, I still have a chance. Unlocks new bonus. When the parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them, they cried and begged, but it was all to no avail. The children have never been seen again. Church bells.
I have to get out of here and find out what this ticket is about. What time is it? people outside my house. Mr. Morris! Mr. Morris! A few Morris. words! Mr. Morris! Goddamn reporters! They've been camped outside my house all day. Mr. Morris! Can you confirm that your son has disappeared? Do you think the origami killer Mr. Morris. kidnapped him? Get another Coming car. I'm going disappear. to walk straight to that car you without stopping on the way. Are you worried your son might Mr. Morris, do you suspect anyone, Mr. Morris? Do you know the investigators have any leads? You lost your son in the park. How do you feel about it? Mr. Morris, can you confirm that your son you has disappeared? Do you think your son is still alive? Decency. have to make it through the crowd. I can't can't take crowds. Just can't handle it. Uh right. I, I can't make it. Too many people. Too many people. to keep L, L1 held down. There you go. One step. Two step. Three step. Four step. Five step. And L1. L1.
Brandon. Jesus. Dad, where are you? Jason! Dad. Well, this is trippy. Jason! Line 18, box number three. Let's see, so is it. Eighteen. Box number three. It's going to be a red balloon.
Lucky Locker. Got to open it. Looks like a yeah. Are you prepared to show courage to save yourself? Drove to garage park on that one. Bloody hell. So I'm guessing the camcorder and the SD card. It's going to show a video of him recording Help! Dad! John! Where are you? Shit! I'm so cold! Dad! Dad! Five Oracle figures. Each figure is a trial. Each trial provides lessons. The lessons are real and obvious. So that was number one. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Uh, why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why he gives him an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? The best way of tracking a predator is to be familiar with his behavior. That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life at stake here. Continue, Jaden. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And, and what size is this, uh, zone? For the moment, about 10 square miles. Ah, oh, great. There must be 10,000 people live in that sort of area. You gonna question them one by one? It may not give us the address of the killer, but at least it's something to go on. Blake, if you've got a better plan, I'm willing to listen. Don't be shy. I'm all ears. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days. But the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims are drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. 
It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. God damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, and we gotta get off our asses and find him. The killer is no ordinary murderer. He is intelligent, organized, and methodical. You won't find him by patrolling the streets. Tell me, Agent Jaden, did you get your vast experience on the job, or did you just fucking read about it in some school book? Your vast experience hasn't prevented eight victims from being murdered. Fucking asshole! That's enough! You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours. Sir, we waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. There is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. Yeah. Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. He's a God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I had come to Earth to persecute him. Real twist. The walls are covered with writing. Quotations from the Bible. Medication. What page is that? By the way.
Anything else new? Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Naaman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Why all the crucifixes? You afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I'm preparing for the end of the world. Where do you work, Nathaniel? You have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. Nathaniel, do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4.30 p.m.? Here? I was here. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. No, I was alone. What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Oh, we both know who talks to you. Don't speak that name. What does he say to you, Nathaniel? I can't talk about it. You mustn't talk about it. He orders Blake, you to go and find new doing? prey, doesn't he? He needs more and more. No. No! You mustn't mention him. You'll bring him here. He told you to go and find that kid in the park. The voices tormented you all night long. You wanted them to stop, didn't you, Nathaniel? Stop! Stop! That's enough! So you obeyed them to make them stop. You took that boy with you and you drowned him. Isn't that right? No! Stop! Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you gonna confess, you bastard? You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun, Nathaniel. I shall dispatch you to your father in hell. He is the son of Satan. He was sent to earth to destroy shoot, us. For Christ's sake, shoot! You're not going to kill the Antichrist with a revolver, Nathaniel. He's much too powerful for the that. Antichrist, my ass! Get that gun out of my face! Put the gun down on the floor. Team, you shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power. Keep calm. Everything is going to be fine, Nathaniel. Christ, all powerful. 
Defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire. And may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. Enough, Nathaniel. Put the gun down. Immediately. Back away. Slowly. Drop the gun. Drop it, Nathaniel. Put your hands on your head. Turn around. I shot him. Yep. Looks like you did. It was only a crucifix. Ugh. Can't say I'll miss him. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Damn it. What happens if you don't shoot him? Does he stab Blake with a crucifix or does he stab himself? I found out the killer doesn't particularly like when he was shot. wants them to be anonymous. It's very much an L.A. Noir kind of game. Even the music is similar to L.A. Noir. This is Bowles. Anybody home? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Wait a minute. Hello, little cutie. You haven't oh. much, much. You looking for your mama? Jesus, this is dark. Looks like we just found a suicide note. And a crying baby in the bedroom. Mrs. Bowles? Mrs. Bowles, are you there?
Mrs. Bowles! Mrs. Bowles, can you hear me? Wake up! Wake up! I'm gonna call an ambulance. No, I... I don't want to go to the hospital. Please. Okay. You got something around here I can dress this wound with? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Don't move. I'll be right back. Uh, uh. Anything in the medicine cabinet? So I found out the child kidnapper has left Ethan a note. Let's see. I need this, and this, and this. I've done what I can. That should stop the bleeding. Well, luckily the wounds aren't too deep. Hey, how are you feeling? Okay. My baby. My baby needs me. Right. You stay there. I'll take care of the baby. Okay? Do you know what to do? With a baby, I mean. I'm, gonna I'm a private you. eye. There's nothing I can't do. <laughs> Her name is Emily. Gotcha. So yeah, the killer left him a box uh, with a videotape of his Ethan's son in a drain pipe. And essentially what's happening is every um, every time there's rainfall, he kidnaps a child, puts them in the drain pipe, and whenever the rainfall reaches six inches in this sort of drain pipe or well that he's got them hidden in, then the kids drown, basically. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what's happening. Shit. Let's go and wash my hands. <clears throat> So he left Ethan this box, and in it was five origami pieces, and each piece is a trial, so he's off to the first trial. And this private investigator has just been to a store that's been robbed. That's about it. Hi there, Emily. So, what seems to be the problem, huh? Oh! Going by the smell? I got a pretty good idea. There we go.
Okay. How do you do this again? I've gone from this very dark suicide mode over to. There you go, fresh this. new baby. That should feel better. Right, Emily? Hey, what's the matter? I thought we solved the problem. I guess I better warm this thing up. Just tilt this bottle a little bit so you don't choke. Oh, good job, Emily. Hmm? You're feeling good now, right? <laughs> now, I'm gonna rock you very gently so you can have a nice little snooze. This game is fantastic. Let's go and check out the Mrs. Bell, Mrs. Dells. Thanks for looking after my baby. I didn't want to leave her. I just couldn't cope anymore. Just not having Jeremy around. He was such a good boy. Uh, right. I can't understand why anyone would want to hurt him. Do you take care of this baby on your own? Doesn't Jeremy's father live with you anymore? He disappeared. The day after Jeremy. I don't know what happened to him. Maybe... Maybe he couldn't take it. Ever since I've had to look after Emily all on my own, and I couldn't do it anymore. 
I understand. Did your husband say anything before he disappeared? Did he leave a note or something? No. He left the house without a word and... <gasps> there was just a cell phone. A cell phone? Yeah, I, I found a cell phone in his dresser. I'm sure it wasn't his. I'd never seen it before. I tried to turn it on, but it didn't work. Do you still have it? Yeah, it's, um, it's in a drawer in the living room. You can have it if you'd like. I'm sure it's of more use to you than to me. Do you have any family or anybody to help you? Yeah. My mother. I didn't want to ask her for anything. We don't really get along. But I guess I'm out of options. Well, look after yourself. And Emma. I will. I promise. It was a very dark scene. So Ethan is off to this first trial and there's Excuse me? Hey! Oh! Huh. Sorry. Good to see you. Uh, what can I do you for? I'd like to get... my car. Hey, you're a pretty patient guy, you are. That car's been there for two years. We took it out for a drive every month and check the tires and batteries, just like you said. Here, it's the third floor Thanks. down. Service elevators. Ah, you have yourself a good one, Chief. The tires were there. Cars were there for two years. This is a nice car.
that's a good shout actually. Because this is the first try. Very good shout. Possibly. Another phone. Oh no, it's sat there. is four miles from here. Leave the parking lot and take the first right. That's it. You have reached your destination. Are you ready to show your courage in order to save your son? Listen carefully. Take the highway and drive against the traffic for five miles. If you haven't reached your destination in five minutes, you will have to. What? If I succeed, I'll get more letters for the hangman. It's my only deed. No turning back now. I can do it. I'd do anything to save my son. A lot of good it'll do Sean if I kill myself on this highway. I've got to do it. For Sean's sake, I have no choice.
What's this excuse going to be? My sat and have to help you So yeah, by the time it reaches six inches, by the time the rain reaches six inches, time's up. I think that's where I'm going to leave it been streaming for about an hour now, so I shall be with that and continue on with the next part, which will probably be tomorrow. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in a bit.